Hey guys, it's Lauren O'Han. In my last video, I talked to you a lot about the steps to take to heal a prolapse. After that video, I got a lot of messages from you all asking me for more videos on prolapse and helping to understand how our daily activities can be contributing to our symptoms and to making things feel worse. So in this video, I wanna talk about the things that could be making your prolapse feel worse and how like it will be clear what to do about it. So I've got my list again. The first thing I wanna talk about is sitting. And I am not a person who shames how we live our life, the amount that we sit, that we are sedentary, all of that stuff um, is not the angle that I take. Although prolonged sitting can very much increase your prolapse symptoms and sitting prolonged, especially on a tucked pelvis. So let's imagine for a moment that your pelvis, this, <laughs> this bit, is a bowl and it's full of water. And if, and you know, the top of the pelv the top of this bowl is here, so it's full of water. If I wanna spill the water forward, I would need to do that in my pelvis. And if I wanna spill the water back behind me, I would have to do this in my pelvis. Feel it in your own body too. So this position, spilling the water backward, is what we call, or it's what I'm gonna to refer to as a tucked pelvis. So in anatomy speaks, people would call it a posteriorly tilted pelvis. And when the pelvis is tucked under that way, it changes the integrity of the musculature within the pelvis. So it can really add a lot of tension to the pelvic floor muscles. When the pelvic floor muscles have a lot of tension to them, it can make our prolapse or the prolapse feel worse and it can make it can feel like we are pushing the organs deeper into like deeper down into the vaginal canal so pushing them lower so one of the things we want to look to reduce is tension in the pelvis and the positioning of our pelvis can really determine that so if we are doing things that encourage our pelvis to be very stuck in a tuck right stuck in this tuck um, then our symptoms might be feeling a lot worse and one of the places that I go with my clients all the time is getting out of that tuck with amazing results. So how we sit matters. So have a look at how I sit. Right now I'm sitting on the two bones that are designed to carry the weight of my body, these sitting bones right alongside your anus. You've got those two bones. What a lot of us do when we sit is lean back like this. Even if we don't do it a lot, we do it on the couch, we do it in chairs. We kind of come to sit in a chair, even if we go and sit at the end of the chair, we then add that tuck under, the water spills backward. And so we wanna start training our body to sit more on our sitting bones. I have a lot of clients who love to garden. After a day of gardening, their prolapse feels worse. Same thing, when you're down at the bottom of a squat or even bending over and your pelvis is in this tucked position, it can push everything forward and down and forward and make it feel a lot more symptomatic. So you're sitting, how you sit really matters. It also goes to then how you stand, right? So if we're standing in this tucked under position where the pelvis is pu pulling forward and tucking under, that will also have the same effect on the pelvic floor and on the pelvic floor muscles. So we wanna look at how we stand. I do not, I love talking about what kind of shoes I think are better for us to be in all the time. You will catch me out on the town wearing a pair of heels. So I am not saying that you should always be in uh, shoes that allow your feet to be feet. You should spend most of your day in great shoes that allow your feet to be feet. However, heels specifically, which again, I love a great heel. Don't, I'm not here to shame. However, what they do mechanically in the body is they will push us forward into that tuck. The minute the heels come up, in order to not walk around looking like that, your body does this quick rearrangement so that you can appear and to be standing up straight. And in to do that, the pelvis comes forward. So it's okay if you wear heels again once a week, go out every night for an hour, but every day, all day, is going to be tricky on your pelvic floor muscles and on your pelvic positioning. So those two things are really important. Managing load, so that's a really fancy way of saying, how are you, how are you handling the movements of your daily life? So 
I've got this really um, lightweight. It's only four pounds. A lot of us are managing much more load than four pounds throughout the day, especially if we have children and we're picking stuff up and we're moving stuff. When you're picking stuff up and moving them, how are you doing that? Are you bearing down and pushing your organs more into your like lower down, right? So a lot of us are. I do a lot of assessment on clients and they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not. And then we go and do the assessment and it's like, oh, I am, I am. So in order to know if you're bearing down, you have to first know what bearing down feels like, especially in like a quick movement, like your daily life movements. It's not a workout, it's not an exercise. It's like a quick, going to pick something up, going to move something. I'm not saying you should move in this very mechanical straight line way all the time. However, a majority of us are bearing down to manage every single load we do. So first determine what bearing down feels like. Bear down a bunch of times. Know what that feels like. That does not feel great on the pelvic floor, especially if you have a prolapse. And then how are, when you go to take a weight and move it to the side, pick it up, move it to the other side, start to feel like, oh, shoot, I'm bearing down, right? You will start to notice. So in the method that I work with, the first step you do is you become aware of what it feels like to do a certain thing, and then you can catch yourself doing it again and again. Okay, so you wanna catch yourself bearing down, notice that, notice if that's your pattern of managing load. Um, for a lot of people with prolapse, it is. It is the pattern of managing load. There's a lot of bearing down, a lot of pushing down, a lot of squeezing from the top, and everything goes to the bottom. And the last two things are that a lot of my clients with a prolapse also have a very tight abdominal wall. So for cultural reasons, emotional support, whatever it is that created that pattern, a lot of us, especially women, but not always, because men can have a prolapse too, by the way, have been trained and taught that like the better, the better stomach is the flat stomach, right? So we've been taught, which is really erroneous, but Unfortunately, in our culture, the better abs are the flatter abs. So a lot of us pull and tighten our abs in all the time. And not also doesn't help that a lot of exercise teachers say, keep your abs in all day long. You wouldn't walk around hopefully with your biceps pulled all day long, tightened. So why would you do that to your abs or your pelvic floor? So abs and pelvic floor pulled in tight all the time is going to most likely increase symptoms, make your prolapse feel worse, push everything down, increase pressure. If you're looking to decrease pressure in your pelvic floor, you have to look at what the rest of your body is doing to contribute to those patterns. We love to spot treat the pelvic floor. Oh, you have incontinence? Do a Kegel. No, 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 and no. It, it, you know, it's a logical fallacy that when a part of the body is not functioning well, then we should just squeeze and tighten it more. Um, in fact, what you want to do is look at the global patterns of the body to increase function. So those are the really, like, really basic things you can start to look at in your day of patterns and habits and movement strategies that you might have that can be making your prolapse worse. Because if you are doing therapy for your prolapse, you want to take into account the entire picture. That's going to give you much better results than just kind of focusing on like tightening everything back up. The problem might be not that you need to tighten everything back up, but that you need to work to create integrity in those structures. Let me know your questions in the comments and thank you all so much for paying attention and for sending me so many messages. I really appreciate hearing from you all.